Energy prices surging. Here's why. Going to break down the recent moves that we've seen in both natural gas and crude oil. Looking at the futures here, you can see natural gas is up 35% since June. This isn't a year to date chart. This is a, a little bit more than two months worth of data. Natural gas up 35%. Uh, in that same time, crude oil up 20%. You look at the last handful of days since really the start of August here, uh, natural gas has been able to put in around 20% crude oil, a little bit less, but crude oil has been kind of consistently trudging higher. Natural gas has seen a lot of back and forth. Um, Want to give you some of the reasoning behind this without going too deep. You, of course, you want as much information as possible, especially if you are out there trading commodity markets or any of the markets that we talk about. Um, but, you know, there's only so much you can know and digest. And of course, most of the stuff that you do digest is at that point public knowledge. And so in theory, the market's already moved because of that news. So how much is it worth to dissect something that's already in the past, already priced in the market? I don't know, but I, I would uh, correlate it to these two central ideas. And, and you might think, Oh, well, they're both energies. So the same story, the same news is moving both of them higher. But in actuality, crude oil and natural gas are pretty distinct. Um, they're not as correlated as you might think, uh, which makes sense. They're both primary markets with their own, you know, crude oil's got its own mess of byproducts. Natural gas has its own, uh, you know, refineries and systems and, and uses that are, are very different than the byproducts of crude oil. Um, and the stories are actually pretty different as well. Crude oil is just seeing increased demand. Um, in the US, actually, supply is surging from crude oil, but the demand is, is just so robust that we've seen a few instances of inventory numbers or, or certain news around crude oil uh, and the increased supply bring crude oil's price lower, as you might imagine. And, and just as a quick note, energy prices, given that they are you know, primary single commodities, they are really dependent on supply and demand. It's, it's in a kind of cool way, uh, very simple like that. Of course, the intricacies end up being uh, around the supply and demand aren't so simple, but it really uh, usually boils down to those two things. And we've seen so many stories recently about how uh, the U.S. is ramping up crude oil supply because the, the idea in, in theory, in, a, in a, a perfect world, if crude oil prices run higher, then producers want to cr create more of that crude oil, and that inevitably brings the prices lower. Uh, and you have kind of a mean reversion in that way. If the prices you know, drop through the floor, oh, well, it's not really worth it, uh, worth it for us to produce so much crude oil, so we'll produce, produce less, supply falls, and you see that crude oil price bounce back a little bit on reduced supply. Interesting time where we're seeing both increased supply from the U.S. Apparently, OPEC is still, you know, standing pat, not increasing that production quite yet. We'll see how that goes. Um, but the demand for crude oil is just uh, is so overwhelming that the price is now well above eighty dollars a barrel, uh, which has been kind of a, a point of resistance in recent crude oil trading. Of course, we'll go back as far as a couple of years in just a second to give you even more context because you might be saying to yourself. I I think I remember triple digit crude oil. Yes, we've been there uh, in recent history. Uh, but on the flip side, natural gas, it's more of a reduced supply story. Uh, we have in certain parts of Europe strikes around um, uh, natural gas uh, refineries and, and production uh, companies there. And that has um, increased natural gas prices from the European uh, commodity substantially uh, more so than the natural gas that we uh, trade and, and uh, look at here in the U.S., but it's pulled that natural gas price higher in the U.S. as well on this reduced supply. So two different things going on, um, and, and we can see plenty of days where crude oil is higher, natural gas is lower, or vice versa, but energy prices in general searching for their own stories. Now, let's give you a little bit of context for where we've been.
because this is going to be meaningful, especially for natural gas, uh, because while it's all well and good to have this, you know, 35% rally since June, holy smokes, good for natural gas. They must be blowing out the highs. Not quite. Um, they're just nearing $3.00. They've been as high as, you know, uh, more than nine, almost ten dollars uh, as of around this time last year. Um, and, and you can see there in June really putting in those lows around two dollars and fifty cents. And so, yes, it's a great rally uh, here in natural gas. Maybe they are starting to get back to this, uh, you know, more normal part of the range for the last couple of years here around four or five, six dollars. Um, but still plenty of ground to cover, uh, still closer to the lows for the last couple of years of trading than the highs. Um, as you can see, I mean, yeah, even if you were to do a year to date uh, percentage change, natural gas would still be down on the year. As you see, January 2023 started more in the, the $4 handle, um, and we're still trading around three there in natural gas. Much different story for uh, crude oil here. Well, it has, you know, been, it looks like low for the last couple of years. It's actually, you know, we'll put add some more data to this, but uh, it's definitely at the higher end of the range for the last several years. And getting back above $80 a barrel, um, already pretty much mid-range for the last uh, couple of years, that's been, like I say, a higher end of the range. Um, that being said, uh, crude oil traded sub 70 in July, and and that's we're really kind of coming off of those recent lows, this this recent surge here in uh, crude, and since 2021 have only traded below 70 dollars a few times, and so yeah, if you're uh, if you're looking at the recent history of crude oil, then. It, it looks kind of normal to have uh, this almost $85 a barrel price, but you go back historically, we'll get to natural gas in a second, but honing in on crude oil just for a second, and you see that those prices above $100 a barrel are not so normal. Um, for the last decade, those have really been the highs. And so we'll see how far crude oil can get. Historically, 80 plus has been the higher end of the range and the more average or the mean has been around you know, $70, $60 a barrel where we were just trading around um, as opposed to natural gas. The historical context is, yeah, $2 was pretty low. $2.50 historically was pretty low. Um, and, and taking another leg higher would just get them to the middle part of the range, whereas another leg higher in crude oil would get them to the high, high end of the range. So energy prices surging. We'll see where this all pans out because there's uh, multiple stories going on having to do with supply and demand, especially in that crude oil market, but also adding up in that natural gas market as we enter the seasonally volatile time of the year uh, for natural gas, the, the winter months here could spark volatility to the up or downside. Um, we'll see how cold it is, how much demand there's gonna be for natural gas, um, but uh, both energy prices surging, there you have it, and you have some historical context for prices as well.